If Jesus is the pivotal person in all history, and he is, then Holy Week is the pivotal time. Around a third of Mark's Gospel is dedicated to Holy Week, and some 40% of John's Gospel is too. But neither Gospel mentions a word about today, Holy Saturday. Holy Saturday is that pause between Jesus dying on the cross yesterday and Jesus rising from the grave tomorrow. The pause happens because today, Saturday, is the Jewish Sabbath, a day of rest. Holy Saturday is sometimes compared to the times we're living in today. Like on the first Holy Saturday, we live in a time when Jesus' work is finished but God's glory isn't yet fully revealed here on earth. It's sometimes called the now and the not yet. Of course, it, it's not a perfect comparison. Our circumstances are hugely different from those of the first disciples of Jesus 2,000 years ago. We're not in fear of our lives. We haven't just seen our best friend executed. We're not bearing the shame at having abandoned him or denied him. But most of all, we know what we're going to be celebrating tomorrow. That that awful Good Friday death has won victory over the devil, over death, over sin. It's not a perfect comparison. But it would be great to be able to learn what those disciples did that day. Maybe they'd already come together in the locked room where Jesus found them tomorrow. Maybe they were crying together, or praying together, or fondly remembering or being challenged by Jesus' words and actions that they'd witnessed over the last two or three years. We just don't know. But Matthew and Luke do tell us about what two different groups of people were up to that first Holy Saturday. Matthew 27 says from verse 62, The next day on the Sabbath, the leading priests and the Pharisees went to see Pilate. They told him, So we remember what that deceiver once said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise from the dead. So we request that you seal the tomb until the third day. This will prevent his disciples from coming and stealing his body and then telling everyone that he was raised from the dead. If that happens, we'll be worse, worse off than we were at first. Pilate replied, take guards and secure it the best you can. So they sealed the tomb and they posted guards to protect it. Now the chief priests and the Pharisees' very identity was wrapped up in strict observance of the law. And on, on that Sabbath day, that day of rest, they were out scheming. And of course their scheming was not just futile, it was entirely counterproductive. So contrast their behaviour the behaviour of Jesus' most resolute foes with Jesus' most resolute followers. Luke 23 verse, verses 55 to 56 starts on the evening of Good Friday and says, The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes. But they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. So Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and all those other inspiring and often unnamed women who had stood by Jesus when others fled. First of all, they prepared for the time when they could honour Jesus, and then when the Sabbath came, they were obedient. 
and waited. Their reward? The next morning they were the very first to be let into the secret by angels. For Jesus was not dead, but had risen. So a lesson for all of us today on this holy Saturday for our now and not yet time. Do what we can to honour Jesus. Do what we can to prepare for when we can be with him again. Be prepared to rest and wait for him. Amen.